I'm Luke Keeler, a friend of your dad's. Hi, how you doing? Your father wants to see you. I need your help. You're familiar with the Domino outfit? Of course. Lou Keeler. It's one of their leg men. Just got himself wasted. Uh -huh. We may, we may just be able to pin the gang style killing on somebody. I wish you luck. Yeah, well, the only witness is a little girl about 12 or 13. She was in the car when they nailed Keeler. According to the department shrink, little girls open up a lot easier to women than they do to guys. You don't seem to have any trouble with big girls. Leave me alone, now, will you? dear, this isn't going to hurt a bit. Says who? Where's my purse? I want my purse! All right. I'm gonna have to get some help. I want my purse! It's got 54 bucks in it! My life savings! And I want it! Miraculously, all the child suffered was temporary unconsciousness and a mild concussion. It's nothing really serious, but we want to keep her here overnight for observation and to make sure her condition doesn't develop into a more serious coma while she sleeps during the night. Well, we'll be able to talk to her. We're trying to put together a picture of what happened in the car. I have no objections. All she has is a mild headache. But you may have some trouble with her. She wouldn't even tell us her name. All we could find was Carrie written on her prayer book. Is this her purse? Yes, sir. Yours. Quite a wad for a kid. That might be your father. There's a resemblance. Mm-hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carrie. Any address? Just uh, Our Lady of Las Brisas. Well, it's a start. Let's have a little talk with a young lady. Hello there. Who are you and what do you want? Well, uh, I'm Sergeant Anderson, and this is Sergeant Bill Crowley. Hi, how are you? Doctors, nurses, needles, and now the fuzz. Gross, man, gross. We need to ask you a few questions about what happened. I don't remember nothing. The accident, honey. I don't remember no accident. I've been in this days. Look at my eyes. OK, maybe you don't, but you were in one, and you're very lucky you came out of it without more injuries. Where do you keep your gun, Creepy? Or is it Crawley? In a holster under your jacket? Or down there near socks? No, I usually keep it in my pantyhose, Squirt. Who was driving the car? I don't know. He picked me up. I was hitchhiking. Carrie. Carrie? Who told you my name? You did. When you were in that, uh, that days of yours, you kept moaning, my name is Carrie, help me, help me. I'll bet. Yeah, it's true. Where were you going? Downtown. The man who was driving, did you ever see him before? You know him? Does he say I did? He's dead. Dead? We need you to help us find who killed him. His name was Luke Keeler. Does that mean anything to you? No. What about the guy who shot him? Think you could identify him? No. And if you don't quit asking me all these dumb questions, I'm going to take the fifth. Now, look, I'm feeling real sick. My head is killing me. And I'd appreciate it if you were both getting lost. And on your way out, would you mind telling those dummies I want my purse back? Or I'll call a lawyer. Why don't you just call the fuzz, kid? Funny. I mean, you're really right with the jokes. You want to get me out of here? So this for her, she's got a mouth on her. Well, she probably picked it up at school. What do you think? 
I think she's scared. So do I. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, she keeps asking for her purse. Any reason why she can't have it? Oh, I know. She's afraid we'll rip off her $54. I'll get it up to her. OK, and listen, will you list her on your files as uh, Leanne Crawley? That's uh, in case anybody makes any inquiries. And if they do, call me right away, will you? Of course. Thank you. supposed to get McGuire. So you off that bum keeler. Why? I saw the kid. She got into the car. I thought it was her old man. Hey, from the back, I well, can't I tell I hear from the back. And that's another thing. Now she knows there's a contract out of McGuire. So does he. She's got to be in a hospital. You have any luck? No. Oh, I've got some real winners here. Winners the whole damn bunch here. Look, Rudy, about McGuire. Why don't we just forget about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgive and forget. My grandmother I'd forgive, only she never skimmed me out of 20 grand. Oh, come on, Rudy. He collected a hell of a lot more than that for us over the years. You know how he is. He plays the horses. So he probably owed some shark yeah, a bundle. He could have come to me and said, Rudy, I'm in trouble. I need a loan. But he didn't. He skimmed me. So I want him burned. Do you hear? Marco. Travis. You find him. Sorry about the interruption, Sergeant, but these old housekeepers, mine is Mrs. Ferguson, 96 years old. They've been around so long, you'd think they were getting orders from the Vatican. Some policewomen are like that. Now, about Carrie. Her last name is McGuire. You have an address on her there, sir? We have it here, 237 Winburn. But the little lady is seldom in residence, may I say? I mean, she's left home a number of times. I know she loves her father very much, but it seems that his wife... Las Brazes Rectory. Yes, they're here. Sergeant, it's for you. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Here, yeah, Bill. The little kid that you saw this afternoon, she tried to split. Oh, is everything under control? Yeah, well, they have a hospital guard planted at the door. She sounds like some character. She's a real pain in... in the neck. Yeah, she's quite a character, Joe. Mrs. McGuire? Yeah? Do you have a daughter, Carrie? Stepdaughter? Why? We're with the police department, Mrs. McGuire. This is Sergeant Anderson. I'm Sergeant Crowley. Could we come in, please? Yeah, sure. Come on in. She ran away again, is that it? I mean, that's all I know. She was in a car accident. She stole a car? <laughs> I wouldn't put it past her. I wouldn't put anything past that brat. Well, try not to worry too much. She'll be all right. Great. Now you want to bring her back here. Is that the idea? No, uh, not yet. She's still in the hospital. What hospital? Well, what is that, a secret or something? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't care. You see, I haven't been feeling well lately, and I couldn't go see her anyway. Is her uh, father home? Him. He walked out of here two weeks ago. <laughs> I hope the two of them find each other like they want. Leave me alone. No. Correction. The three of them. 
My darling husband's other darling offspring, Sean. More bad news. 20 years old and a born loser. And uh, he lives in this house, too? About five minutes a week when he comes in for a handout. Mrs. McGuire, would you do me a favor, please? Take a look at this picture. Do you recognize this man? Yeah, I've seen him around. Around where? The friend of my husband. He was murdered, Mrs. McGuire. He was in the car with Carrie when someone took a shot at him and killed him. I knew this was going to explode into something heavy. I mean, with a kid. I mean, I haven't been the best of influences, but murder. Murder, no way. Nobody's going to go blaming this on me. I mean, I'm out of this. Now, if you two don't mind, I'd like to go to bed. Yeah? It's Greg. Yeah. How are you, Helen? Never been better. Carrie there? No. The cops who were here just said she was in a hospital. What hospital? Is she all right? They didn't say. All they told me was that your friend Keeler is dead. Helen, if she gets a hold of you, you tell her to get in touch with me, here? I'll be at the Cheney Hotel over on 7, under the name Wilson. That, that. Listen, whatever happens, you keep me out of this. Wilson. Thank you for the flowers. They must have cost you, huh? Well, I sort of got them at a discount. I winked at the florist and he threw in a few extra. They're real pretty. Thank you. So are you, Carrie. Especially when you smile. Sergeant Anderson? Pepper is my first name. Don't try conning me. I'm cute, period. I say you're pretty. Carrie, last night we were talking to your stepmother, and she thinks that maybe you were trying to meet up with your father, with Lou Keeler, and... So let her think. What does she know? Or care? You know what? I hope I never have to see that gross old bag again. And you can tell her that for me. Well, maybe you won't have to. Uh, let me tell you, I got a plan. Captain Crawley and I usually just handle murder cases, and you'd be taken care of by a juvenile. But when somebody comes along that we like, they let us take them over to some friends of ours who lost both their kids. They like to have some visitors, kids around the house again. Wouldn't be for long. Just until we find your daddy, what do you say? I don't want you to go snooping after him. Why not? I just don't want you to. Well, that's pretty stupid talk coming from a smart girl. And you're awful smart. He's obviously in trouble, and we want to help him. Don't you know that? Listen to me. When you tried to get out of here, were you trying to find your father? Or trying to make contact with him somehow? How could I? I told you. I don't know where he is. Would anyone believe that? Will you believe it? Please? Well, Carrie, somehow I do. Question. Why would anybody want to waste time bumping off a loser like Luke Keeler? How about if they're after somebody else? This is McGuire. He's got quite a file on him. Man, he's dirty. Nothing major, but plenty long. Now, intelligence says that he's mixed up with the dominoes. Now, he could have gotten in bad with the mob. And if they wanted him dead, what if when the hitman saw the girl get into the car, he mistook Keeler for the father? He thought the father was picking up his kids. Sure, possible. And McGuire disappeared. He must have had a reason. 
And that would account for her not knowing where he was and having to use Keeler. I'm not so sure she didn't know where he was. But, well, maybe it's all beginning to fall together. Wouldn't it be great if we could finally get something on the dominoes? Hey, group. Hey, Hi, you just getting back from the hospital? Yeah. How's little Sarah was? She doesn't know where McGuire is. She doesn't? Uh-uh. OK. She's got a brother named Sean. You guys see if you can find him, put a tail on him. All right. All right. Meanwhile, I uh, got a call from one of your friends, a little lady named Sally. She says she knows McGuire. Good old Sally came up with something, huh? She wants us to meet her at the store, whatever that means. Should go beautifully with my Italian eyes. Yeah, trouble is you'd never wear it. You're too conservative. No, I pity the man you end up with. You better be careful, it could be you. Miss, miss, how much is this tie, please? 85 cents. Mm. Hi, Sally, this is Bill. Hi. Uh, yeah, we talked on the phone, how are you? You know Greg McGuire, right? Yeah, we um, get together about once a week or so. I mean, he's practically separated from that wife of his. Yeah, we met that wife of his. Well, then you can understand why. He's in trouble, and you know it. That's why you called us? Yeah, word is out he's in bad trouble. Have you seen him in the last couple of days? No. Is there any chance he could have uh, skipped town? I doubt it. His daughter's still around, right? Yeah. Well, I know one thing. He'd never leave without her. Sally, you think you can come up with a location on him? Well, I can try. We'll take the tie. Pay her. Sean? What do you care? Oh, come on. For me, okay. You? I heard they were after you. Then why don't you split? I have to get in touch with Carrie. I want you to find her for me and give her this. It's where she can contact me. How much do I get for my trouble? I hear you're into those guys for plenty. Well, you were always a crook. I guess I deserve that. I didn't give you much to go by, did I? I'll get some money to you soon, believe that. First, you find your sister or she gets in touch with you from a hospital, wherever, and you give her the envelope. Sean, please. Tell her I'm not deserting her. Hi, Betty. Hello. This must be the place. Sure hope it meets with your satisfaction. Hey, hey, Carrie, this is Mr. and Mrs. Novotny. This is Betty and Carl. Welcome, Carrie. Welcome, everybody. Welcome Thank back. You. Something smells good. Oh, well, come on inside. It's not goulash. Everybody, is it goulash? It's our favorite kind of goulash. Goulash? I thought that was something you were in the snow. Just get in the house. I mean, yes, thank you. It's the best cake I ever had. Well, now that's the best compliment. 
now. Peppers? Oh, no. Bill, no, no please. Oh, please do. Where are you, No, don't give them any more. Hello. Come on, you get fat. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, just one. <laughs> well, you, and oh, here's you the tits for you. Prune, uh, it's true well, at work. That's a, so the apple, save the apple. Well, I'm such a regular guy. Uh, yeah. Hi, Bill. Uh, this guy, Sean McGuire, we just uh, located him at this discotheque on Ramola. You want me to uh, pick him up and question him? No. Uh, I want you to tell him. I'll see who he meets, where he goes. OK. Well, I don't know. Bill, uh, uh, they're wondering if we could stay and watch some television. Please. You want to? How about a game? Play post office sergeant? Only with kids over 21. Not bad. Not bad. How about a little craps? Or some poker? Uh, <laughs> she's kidding. It's uh, a long way back. We better get going. <clears throat> Listen, it's really delicious. Oh, that you're gonna love, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Listen, Snake Eyes, now these are nice folks, mm -hmm. and I want you to do exactly what they tell you, you understand? And don't go collecting any souvenirs. You're getting real hot with the jokes. Not nearly as hot as the seat of your pants is gonna be. We really appreciate it. You know that. Oh, you're welcome. Been a doll. little unusual, but a doll. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we better is. get going. All right. Great dinner. Good. I wish you'd teach Pepper to come Oh, back. come on. Hey, don't forget your doggy bag. Bye. All right. You behave yourself. Bye. Well, now. Well, now. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I think we should go up right now and see your room, all right? I think you're going to like it. It's a bed with a great cover on it. I think you'll like it. Come on. OK. Yep. <laughs> Is there a Sean McGuire there? Yeah? Hello, dummy. It's Carrie. Anything for Wilson? Two twelve. No mail, no messages. In the alley, McGuire. Twenty-five-foot cord. Okay, pussy cat. What do you want? Oh, Betty. Excuse me. It's just that. Uh, well, you know, I was. Uh, well, never mind. What is it? Well, did you look everywhere? Did you look outside? Oh no. All right. Listen. Hang tight, and I'll get in touch with Crowley right away. Okay, Betty. I'll get right back to you. I'm telling you, I wasn't in the car. Let me. Hey, hey. What's going on here? This is what you do. This came down the interview room. Chris, you came all out of the building. Well, down the elevator shaft. Look this guy all the way down the elevator shaft. Yeah. Any word? Yep. She's with her brother, Joe and Peter Tailingham. 
That poor kid. It really makes me sick. Pat, will you stop worrying? It's going to be okay. She's a 12-year-old child. How can I help but worry about her? Pepper, we're on to it. It's going to be okay, okay? Remind me to keep telling myself that. Still hot? I saw Pop. Where is he? I don't read other people's mail. And I couldn't care less. What are you talking about? He gave me this to give to you. It's where he's staying. Well, let me get. How much you got on him? What? Bread. Trip like this, price of gas. I don't do it for nothing. Especially for that crumb. Here. How much? $54. It's all I got. It's all you got in your hand. How about what else is in the bag? Sean, here it is, and it's all I got. You better give me that info. Uh-huh. Sean, it's it. You better give me that show. What's that? What's that? You Babysitters for uh, Sergeant Anderson, you know who that is. Babysitter Royster, babysitter Styles. about McGuire. Where is he? He called her. He's on his way to the flea market, probably to borrow some money. Oh, God. Oh. What are we going to do with this friendly? Just leave her here. Ugh. Come on. You come with me. Now, you're going to listen. And you're going to listen good. You hear me? Your father is in a lot of trouble, and his best hope for survival is if he works with us. Work with you? And rather than his friend? That's all you want him for. And then you'll bust him. You want a cold drink? No, I'll take some coffee. Sit over here. There's worse things than being busted, Carrie. Name one. Being killed. Suppose he does serve time. When it's over, he's free. Don't you want him to have that chance? Don't you want to live with your daddy? That's what they always tell you. When it's over. How long is when it's over? When it's over, you're finished. You're wrong, honey. And now you're going to tell me about Goldilocks and Three Bears? Look, I know about cops. First they sweet talk you, and then wham, you're in the jug. They've got quotas. Where's my coffee? You know too much. That's your trouble. The trouble is, you know all the wrong things.
trying to tell you something about your father, who you claim to love so much. Of course I love him. He's all I've got. Then why don't you help him? Or are you sweet-talking me? Okay, what do you want? First, some answers to some questions. What did you find out at the hotel? The pop wasn't there. We know that. What else? That he might call in. I left a message. What was the message? That I was all right. Carrie, is there something you're supposed to tell your father or something he needs from you? I can't answer that. Why not? Give me a reason. I promise not to. Come on, Carrie. I promise. Who did you promise? God. I promised God in front of my father. Did you break a promise? In front of God to your father? Would you? I, I don't know. Morning. He should have come sooner. He's gone. How long ago? About an hour. Did you say where? No. This is getting to be quite a habit, isn't it? It's not going to happen again. Mm-hmm. Carrie's promised me. I really dig those Novotnys. Yeah, well, you better hope that they dig you, because that's what's going to count from now on. 12Y53 to 12Y50. 12Y50, go. We blew it at the flea market. How come? Too late. Yeah. Where are you now? I'm on Santa Fe, heading west. Just keep looking. What else can I tell you? Roger. That's just great, isn't it? My daughter? Yeah, she was in looking for you. Describe her. Oh, about 12, uh, long blonde hair, feisty. What did she say? Oh, uh, she said to tell you that uh, she'll be at the Avalon Movie Theater on the 4th of Maine, and she's going to wait until 5. She said that. Well, I don't buy it. Try again. No dice. It wouldn't bite. Give me the address the kid left. Bill. Finally got a call from the flea market. Sally called back about an hour ago. What would you tell her? To tell McGuire if she sees him or talks to him that I think the DA will go easy on him if he cooperates. Can she get to him? I think so. Bill, if we can get him before the grand jury, he's got a pretty good chance, don't you think? I mean, better than most. Sergeant Anderson. It's Carrie's father, Greg McGuire. Oh, Mr. McGuire. Uh, thank God we've been hoping to hear from you. How's Carrie? Fine. She's uh, worried about you, but she's OK. You know why I'm calling, don't you? Uh, I, can, I can guess, but I'm not sure. I'm ready. I, I want to turn myself in. But, but I don't know how. I'm being tailed. I've shaken them for now, but I, I, I can't show again. Where are you now? On Alameda. Where on Alameda? Alameda and 7th. A saloon. Sinbad's Tavern. We're on our way. out front. He wants to see you. Get in here. 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 Get in here.
all units. Kidnapping just occurred at the Mayberry School, Bayard and Roselawn Avenue. Victim's name is Carrie McGuire, 12 years old, brown hair, wearing a brown shirt and blue pants. Two male suspects, 35 to 50, wearing business suits. No further description. Suspects and victim last seen westbound on Roselawn from the school in a white over brown late model Ford sedan. It's 12Y90 from 12Y50. Repeat the suspect's description. And was there any uh, license number obtained on the vehicle? 12Y90 to 12Y50. Suspects described only as two male Caucasians in business suits, approximately 35 to 50 years. A 1976 light brown Thunderbird 108 Paul Charles Edward. 12Y50, Roger. What'd you say, PCE? Yeah. Have 12Y52 head towards the school and assist in the search. We'll continue on to the bar and meet with the victim's father. 12Y52, 12Y50 requests you meet him at the Mayberry School to assist in the search. All units in the vicinity, 12Y50 requests assistance in the search of a 1976 Thunderbird with two male Caucasians in the Point Dune Beach area. Rendezvous at the Mayberry School for further instructions. Please clear tap one. Is that a copy, Air One? This is Air One, Roger 90. All units respond, code three. Yeah. Is Greg McGuire's wife? Yeah. What do you want? We picked up his daughter, Mrs. McGuire. You tell your husband if he ever expects to see her again, he's to call a certain number. He'll know what it is. Tell him he has until 6 o'clock tonight. Yeah, um... Give me the number of, the um, Cheney Hotel. We could get out and walk, only I don't know what to do with the car. I don't know where the traffic's coming from. Sorry, ma'am. He hasn't called him for a few days now. But what would you know where to contact him? No, ma'am. Oh, sure. Well, if he comes in or calls, either one. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'll write it down. It should be around here, Bill. Wait a minute. Is that it? Yeah, sit That's back. it. That's it. What's the matter, Joe? You crazy or something? Didn't you see that kid going across the street? What do you get the like to bump out of a crocodile box? What is your problem, man? Mrs. Wilson, has my daughter been in? Well, in case she does, she won't. The kid's been picked up. You want her? You gotta call her number. Get it? Who told you this? She said she was your wife, Helen. Where is she? The beach, north of Point Dune. She'll be there for an hour. I'll make it. And get this, McGuire. Any coppers show she's terminated. Bartender? We're looking for, we're looking for a guy named Ray McGuire. That's him. There he goes.
Stay right here. Try to calm down. We'll get a police officer here shortly. But please, just try to relax. Yeah, we're in pursuit of a stolen late model white Pinto westbound on Franklin toward Western. Advise 12Y52 and uh, request black and white units to assist us. Roger. It'll be good to see Pete and Joe. 12Y52, can you intercept 12Y50 westbound on Franklin at Normandy? That's a Roger, 90. This is 50. Can do. We'll intercept as instructed. Units in the vicinity assist in the pursuit of a white late model Pinto. Roger, this is 12 Y40 in pursuit. <laughs> Request Air 1 to assist 12 Y50. 12 Y90, this is Air 1. We're airborne. Air 1, this is Air 1. Air 1, this Joining pursuit eastbound Franklin and Hoover. <laughs> Somebody must have gotten word to him about Carrie. Oh, I hope not. You want me to lay back, Bill, or? Just don't, uh, just don't cause him to have an accident. Twelve I fifty. We're not turning northbound on Western. Looks like we're heading for the Hollywood Freeway. Request our unit to assist us. Air One, did you copy 12Y50? Suspect in the late model white Pinto is now northbound on Western. There they are. You got him. Right behind you, Bill. Roger, Joe. Y50, we're still heading north on Western. Stolen vehicles turning onto the Hollywood Freeway outbound. West helicopter interceptors at junction of Ventura Freeway and, and Hollywood Freeway. Roger 12Y50, rendezvous with Ventura and Hollywood Freeway. Roger, Eddie. 12 y 50 this is Air 1, reporting Hollywood and Ventura freeways. I think I got you coming up to the off-ramp. Roger, Air 1. Looks like we're not turning off the Hollywood freeway at Mulholland. Roger, 50. We got your Daisy Jane coming up to the off-ramp. Air 1, we're turning west toward the beach. That's a Roger 50, we're with you. You still with us, Eddie? Roger 50. Well, I think you to all units, we're in the Tepec Tunnel. Keep it close, Eddie. Stay tight on 52's tail so he doesn't make us. Looks like this pinnel may be getting a little hanky. Don't you think we better lay back a little, Bill? All units, we're now heading north on the coast highway. Damn, he may have made us. He's starting to dig out. Hang back a little, but keep him in sight. Air one, stay with him offshore. We're gonna hang back. Oh, he's headed to the beach.